Hi, it's Leo from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. And today I am going to show you how to do an Alice in Wonderland piece. So let's get to it. So this is a really tidy little uh, Queen Anne legged sideboard. It's got a mirror. Uh, I don't think I'll be using the mirror for this today. And I will have to do some sanding up here where the mirror It's really rough. The top finish is, isn't great, but there's no chipping veneer or anything nasty. It's in good condition. Um, two drawers, two cupboards. And um, so let's kind of... Let's just get going on this. I'm going to flip it upside down. Um, the piece has already been cleaned. I'm going to flip it upside down in a minute. And the next time you see it, it'll be upside down because I want to paint the feet first. Uh, but I'll give the this top part here a sand. Okay, so I've painted all four feet cream. And all I'm doing is using a liner brush to do swirly rings um, around the legs um, that's all I'm doing and once we've done this we will stand it back up again it's just always easier to do these kind of things when you're uh, when you when before you've started any kind of finish and that way you can just turn it upside down so you get the gist of what I'm doing here. There's no rhyme or reason. I don't have a huge amount of a plan. I just want it to look pretty cool once it's once it's um, back on its feet. So I'm going to get on and do that now. Okay, so what's happened? It's been flipped back over. Our feet are done. Uh, these tops here have been sanded to get rid of the residue. Holes filled. These are going to be decoupage and painted. Martin has ordered me new face plates because these doors don't close very well because they had a locking mechanism and he's going to put me new locks. So I'm going to go with vintage handles up the top because obviously it's a vintage piece as well, but that never usually stops me. But it's so that it goes with the new locks. So we won't see the locks today. Uh, right, what did I do? I went on to any free... Now, it has to be free. If you want to sell it, yeah, it has to be a free source image. But you can get... For example, if you use com you know, companies like Raw Pixel and things like that, subscribe and you pay monthly and you can get like free um, images. So normally I would do something like this with a transfer, but I just thought, you know what, I've got all the facilities to do all this myself, so I may as well just do it myself. So what I've done is I've printed, lo I mean, loads, you name it, I've got it. Because I thought what I can do is what I don't use, I'll use it for the next piece. Now, this is a commission. This commission is for my best customer. Um, she has a boutique store down south and she sells my pieces, but she sells the quirky ones. She's just sold an Alice in Wonderland, so she wants another Alice in Wonderland. So when she says, jump ha, say how high. So <laughs> this has got to be ready ASAP. So if I'm kind of speeding through the process, it's because I'm trying to do it um, and get it ready for her. So what I'm going to start by doing is just the normal, I'm going to be ripping out my images. I did them on a grey, which is weird because when I was doing it uh, on the computer, I thought it was cream. Um, and I really would have preferred it to be cream, but I'm going to run with it because that's how I roll. Um, so I'm just ripping out the images. Once I've got the images ripped out to where I want them, I mean, I'm not being too, you know, like I'll take a bit of that away because I'm going to have to blend around all this. Now, just be careful when you're doing something like this that you don't end up ripping the feet off. Uh, ask me how I know. <laughs> oh, see, look. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know why anybody watches me. <laughs> right. Oh, and the white bit at the top. I just want to do one piece just because if you haven't, I mean, and you have, because I mean, I have a decoupage company, so you can see me do this any day of the week, but um, it's just the same principle. So he's going to go on there, I think. Uh, how super cute is this? This is going to go there. And this is a free source, but it's not an original image, but I do have lots of the original um but that one's gonna i think gonna go on the side um yeah she's gonna get ripped out and go just her because i'm gonna put the cards on myself in the middle and i think i'm gonna put the rabbit that i just so showed you 
on this side for a starter for 10. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rip these out and glue them on. So once I get to the point where we're ripped out, then we'll just come back. Matte Mod Podge is the medium for what I'm about to apply. Um, now, you've seen me do this so many times, it must be very, very boring. But you want a good, generous coat, but you don't want too many lumps and bumps because that's going to make it wrinkly. So, and you don't want any wrinkles. Oh, there's a little bit of pink in that brush. I'm going to put him on about here, I think. Make sure the rip where I, I ripped his little feet. There we go. Why do you rip round decoupage paper? You rip it because these little fibres are easier to blend than a cut line. That's why you do it. Once you've got it on, do not, under any circumstances, mess about with it. Just leave it alone. You will start to see wrinkles. That's it just drying. They'll all go back down. Leave it alone. Don't be touching it. Don't be fiddling around with it. Just leave it alone. That is my best advice. Um, now, I want her something like here. Slightly off. Off. I'm changing my brush because the other one I felt hadn't been cleaned properly and it was bleeding a little bit of red. This is a beautiful piece of... What are you laughing at, Martin? He, what is he... Do you know what? Martin is in one of those moods that he's, he's, he's... Do you know what? I should put a microphone on him and let you hear his commentary. He's probably thinking I didn't wash my brushes right. That's my fault. <sighs> right, so... Popping pop her. I think this is a bit overkill. I don't think she's anything like that size, but... Uh, now... We're going into a wrinkly part here, so make sure you've got enough. If you're doing something over, like a sort of fluted edge. Martin's holding me cupboard doors. That's why he's ordered me new locks, because we can't have, can't have that. So I'm thinking, I want to move it over slightly. I'm thinking about here. Now, make sure I get this in here. And make sure that it's stuck down because if anything's going to pull up, it's going to be these edges here. And this over this side. And there, that on there. Now you're getting the general thrust of what I'm actually doing here. I'm just applying the decoupage. And this one is going to go something like that. And all these parts in between are going to be filled with stuff so i'm going to get on and i'm just going to kind of roughly show you some of the ideas that i've got here i don't need to use them all i think martin thought i was decoupage in the world when i said i want all these printed out so i've got cups i've got her with her neck all stretched i've got plenty of different kinds of keys i've got another vintage one obviously because painting the rose is red um did some roses i've got some teacups i got more roses in a different size. What else have I got? I've got the hat because I'm going to make a top hat for the Mad Hatter. I've got some flamingos because she played, you know, um, croaky with them upside down. I've got drink me, more keys. We're all mad here. The pocket watches. Uh, more playing cards. More playing cards. And another stock vintage image. Now, as you can see, it's I'm yeah, <laughs> Martin's seen quite a lot to choose from. I'm not trying to be boasty. I've pre I've I've printed the, all these off because I will use them again. I do quite a lot of commissions, which are Alice in Wonderland furniture, and I don't actually really do commissions. But any of the quirky and the unusual stuff, I'm usually asked to do it. And if a customer's bought from me before, um. Up, they get what they want and I'm happy to do a commission. If somebody just comes to me and says, can you, I normally kind of don't, don't really do that. But let me know in the comments whether you're a painter who paints only commission work. My friend only does commission work. She doesn't do her own stuff and sell it or whether you just do your own stuff and sell it um, or whether you're a bit like me, you kind of go, well, I'll go all out for the quirky stuff if people ask, but that's how I operate. Anyway, I'm going to glue all of this decoupage paper onto this furniture and uh, then you're going to see how I blend it all in. There's no point me watching me put every single part down. You'll see it all once I've kind of got as much as I've, I've done. I'm only going to work on the front right now, so an awful lot of talking and not enough action. 
So I'm going to get on with this now. Okay, lovely people, it has been applied. Now this isn't your normal sort of decoupage where you, what I've done with this is I've put some of my paper over the other, over other parts of the paper, doing something a little bit different on this one. Now, if you're printing at home on just your ordinary home printer and you want to do something like this, just remember, this has been done in a laser printer so it won't smear, but if you're using an inkjet printer, spray it with some spray sealer first before you apply it. Let it dry and then spray it and then you'll get a better effect and it won't be so smeary because that is one of the hazards of doing that kind of thing. Now, uh, you can do this with, I mean, it doesn't have to be what I'm doing. You can pick anything and just decide to do it and then do a really blendy finish and they always look pretty good but all i've done is just hodgepodge it all together in what i think is going to come together i've done the sides i've done the top and i've done this other side the top and the sides are not dry yet but the front's dry so we're going to start working on it now what have i got in here i've got some jiveny and a little bit of old ochre which has given me the alice in wonderland blue in my lid here i have some old ochre and a tiny little bit of athenian black I've got this size brush, I've got a blending brush, I've got the blue brush here. These are all, the, most of these are artist brushes because we're going to be working in quite tight spaces. Now, how are we going to do this? Let's start with, because I want to try and blend out to the parts here being blue, but we, want, we need to do here first. So now is this sort of test whether um, this is going to be the right sort of colour. Um, and we're blending up here. Doesn't matter if we touch his ears a little bit. And you're gonna have a put a couple of coats on. And as you can see how I'm applying it, just to get any sort of I'm going right past into the edge. Um like this. Now I'm gonna bring my white here, and this is where I'm gonna start kind of doing some of my blue. I've got an awful lot of blue on my brush here, but because I'm blending it, I want to start with the, the, the most blue on the edge before I bring it in. And as per usual, when you're blending, you need a clean other brush to do this. So I'm coming from the dark to the light and I'm just going to do this. Kind of wobbly because I'm, I'm doing it with the door open. And then all I'm kind of doing is Mixing my white into my blue, like that. I'm going to need a wee bit more sort of blue here. And I'm going to put a little bit more white here of my whitey grey mix. And coming back with my blending brush again. Now you, your blending brush could get a little bit overloaded, so have a clean cloth to wipe it on. And then I'm just going to kind of tap and make it a little bit lighter around some of these edges. Now this could lift a little bit but it'll go back down again it's just because it's getting its edges dampened but you can kind of see the look I'm going for here so here I'm going to be wanting some cream and again I'm gonna just bring that to here but I want to get it's better if you can see get a smaller brush and really bring your colour up into, that's a great way of making sure that you, your decoupage paper doesn't look like it's just been, been stuck on any old random way. If you, and I'm going to just down round these teacups there. Um, here. Sorry, Martin, I'm jumping about. Martin struggles to follow me with the camera because I go all over the place. Something like this and I'm going to bring this to this edge here now nice and thick on your edges like this and then do your sort of blending McBlender blenderson I can't believe I just said that right okay Martin's laughing at me blending blending with blenderson <laughs> right no, these are not my new jeans. <laughs> no, they got ruined yesterday. I think Matt was a bit horrified there. I'd managed to wreck my jeans so quickly. Again, lots of the blue on this edge. 
I don't really want to touch it up against where I've done the feet. So I'm going to be kind of... So you can see I'm not like being crazy careful. And back to my blendy brush. Lightly touch that in here like this. And you could fiddle with this, to be honest with you, forever in a day. Um, and it's always, this is the funnest part for me of doing, well, apart from bohemian stuff, the funnest part for me is blending. I love to blend. Right, okay, so we're going to have, I want to put, I'm going to let this bit dry apart and I'm going to put a wee bit more in it because there's a little bit of a, managed to get rid of this, Not, but can you see that? You don't want... You could always put a little bit more on if you wanted to and kind of saturate that join, but um, the trick is not to have anything that looks like that's what you've done with it. Up here, I'm just going to put a little bit more white. I'm only going to just show you one door. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to show you the whole thing. That would be a little bit boring, but I mean, obviously, when I get to the top, I'll show you the top. And I was considering, I'm going to paint in his his uh, ears there now. Uh, what do I want to do here? I want to bring this up here and have the top of this, my blend, I think. I've managed to go to a really small brush here, which is a little bit silly. I think I might just do my blue along. I'm kind of rushing, but but don't rush this. This is the fun part of doing these kind of looks. Come along with my big brush. Put it in there, it's got a bit of a bubble on it. I think this is where you kind of have to really think out your sort of plan. I think I'm going to take my blue to here. Um, how am I going to do this? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove this drawer. And just so that it's not touching up with the blue. And I'm going to do whoop, this along here. Oh, I'm dropping paint everywhere. I think this maybe should have been white, but we'll, we'll see when we open the door. All right, so I'm going to bring here to here. But what I'm now going to do is get my blendy brush and just touch under here. Just so there's a suggestion of this blue and some of the white up there. Bring it over there where there's that joint. Uh, this part here is bothering me a wee bit, but you get, I think you've got enough to understand, you know, you're just kind of working your way around it and uh, blending it up. When it comes to your edge down here, just paint that in. Remember and open your doors in a minute though. If not, it'll be uh, a little bit sticking together. Yeah, so that's where we're at. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blend out the front um, just to make it work. I want to just bring a wee bit, a bit more blue up around that playing card. Um, I don't care if it looks a wee bit darker. Anyway, I'm going to stop now and I'm going to get on and I'm going to blend the rest of this out um, to the way I want it. Okay, so you probably think, gosh, an awful lot has happened since you last saw it. But really, it's just the blend that I showed you. In amongst all the paper, I did the grey white and then I just blended it out to the dark in exactly the way I showed you on this door. I repeated the process here, here, on the drawers, on the top, 
and in a little bit I'll get Martin to show you the sides. Well, he's showing you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you see the steam? <sighs> That's how cold it is. Right, okay. So what I'm going to do next is I have this. I don't know what you'd call it. It's a good wee stencil. It's kind of like lots of little triangles. It makes a really good effect. I'm going to put it round here, but um, I need to take my uh, drawers out um to do it because i'm going to keep them plain so we'll just work on this part here this is going this is really annoying me but i know it's getting a new catch tomorrow so i'm going to try not to be too annoyed with it um what i'm going to do is i'm just going to see if i can wedge it with a little bit of paper because i don't want the no that's not going to be thick enough try the what try the top Oh, Martin, you're just way too intelligent for me. Right. Okay, so I'm going to use this bad boy on this here. So I'm just going to, I want to have as much on as possible. So uh, let's kind of do it here. And it's only round here we're doing it. So I've got a little bit of black on my brush, Athenian black chalk paint. And I'm just going to do the swirly whirly. Um round it um, and offloading making sure I'll get the, the part the next part of that when I put it on from the other side um, this is just going to give it a wee bit more what will we see interest okay man and you don't need to <laughs> man's filling in the blanks here like do you know what I was saying to Martin recently I think this would be really funny because Martin can't paint furniture and I was saying you know what we should do? We should do we should do a video <laughs> and where you paint a piece of furniture and I just tell you what to do. Like, because I'm always telling you guys, like, it's really easy. I said, we should just get you to do that, man. And I said, that would be really lots of fun. And uh, he said, no, he didn't think that would be a good idea. But you can always leave me a comment if you want to see Martin do some furniture <laughs> art. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, he's actually really creative Martin so he probably has watched so many videos that he probably could make a piece of furniture out if he tried but um, his kind of thing is maybe not this kind of thing I'll film you Martin and we'll see how badly that turns out um, I know this edge here I'm just going to take it right round so you have to be a bit of a contortionist I got this tiny little stencil. Uh, Martin, you're gonna have to go back a bit. I'm banging the camera. Um, from where did I get this from? Amazon, probably. Um, see if Martin can find it for you. I want to move. I uh, want we'll a bit of a shape here as well because I want it really to kind of go up beside the drawers. So there, try that. Um, so let's put a drawer back in and see how that that looks around there. Oh, ho, ho. I'm going to do this side now. Yeah. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to, no, I'm going to do this side next. But you don't need to see me do it again. And then we'll see what interest we can put around the bottom half. Okay, so here I have the plaid stamp. From IOD, this is how it looks. It's not going to show up on all of the blend. I'm going to have to take my my fix out just now because it won't show up on the white because white is what I'm using. But I didn't want to saturate it with too much black. Um, but obviously I wanted to put a little bit more interest onto it. So let's see how how this comes out. You're not going to see it crazy because there's loads of white on that, but you can see the check, and that's what I'm trying to to do um i'm just gonna run it across here and i'm gonna do this all the way round on the blue and the blend i've not quite formulated what i'm gonna do around here yet i might just leave it it may be just enough but uh, um when you're doing things like this and especially when you're using decoupage paper and you've seen me do this loads of times with 
obviously more bohemian sort of stamps and stencils but the more interest you can put on it the more texture you can put on it detracts from the fact that you've stuck this on i don't feel too guilty because it's it's my designs apart from the you know the the vintage one so i'm all right with it but it's just you know you want it to be your work so you don't want it to detract from anything else now where there's a bit like this just kind of blend it with your finger so you can still see it underneath but the check's still there now i'm gonna have to go right along now you get the general sort of thrust now of what i'm actually doing uh i want to have a liney part here so let's do something like this so i'm just going to work my way across the front doing this right now and uh then we'll get on to the next part of whatever i'm doing yeah so i'm just getting martin to give you a wee shot of what's happened on the top i just did the same pattern that i did on the front now the next thing i'm going to do is when i find my water it's behind me sorry right i've got some pink down here that i've just mixed up and i'm just going to start giving the rabbit a little bit of character um i'm not painting it all in just some of it just a little bit of just a little bit of character there and i think i've got a different blue here which is Gainsborough blue it's a different it's kind of more of a it's a different shade of this blue and i'm just going to mix up a little bit i'm just kind of water coloring it and this is exactly the same if you ever buy made by marley decoupage paper you can paint over the top of it as well i mean it's it's fine to do so so i'm just going to kind of just going to give them a little bit of color here you can see i'm I'm not really kind of like it's just a suggestion of it just kind of zhuzh them up a bit yeah might do it see what it looks like down in there and then just kind of rub that with my finger just so you can still see the detail underneath like that and that is probably might do a more be highlighting them in a minute it's a little bit soulless right now right okay so i'm doing that there i'm going to do sort of small parts on alice with the same blue i'm just going to run it along the bottom of her skirt you can see what i'm doing now i'm literally just tying all the work together um and i'm not really kind of like spending too much time about it just to kind of like give it oh that's a little bit much just a little bit of colour and a wee bit of interest. Maybe paint a pocket in. Like that. I think that's already a pocket there. We'll just go for that there. So that's the blue in there. And I'm going to mix up a blondie set of colour for her hair. The blonde for his sandwich. The Mad Hatter sandwich. And I'll probably do his bow tie. And I'll maybe put some stripes on his socks. But that probably... Hang on a minute. I just want to... Um, I just want to, I just want to give that, it is, his eyes looked a little bit soulless, so no, it doesn't. Um, next thing, and this is the last thing, pretty much, I think, I don't think I'm going to do any more, I've, just off camera, I've got some stays on ink and i will identify this stamp i found it in my drawer i've obviously never used it it's a redesign by primo one and i'm just going to try and stamp the side one so that i can come down here um so let's see if i can maybe pull that off um i probably won't <laughs> uh it's kind of awkward because i've got the one beside it but let's see if I can make this work. And I'm just going to do 
this. And that's just adding something else around your decoupage paper, which is finishing it off a little bit more. Now, once I've kind of highlighted the pieces and parts and I put a little bit more of this stamping on, I'm going to actually take this piece over to my house overnight to let it set because it's been in the shed for a number of days now and uh, I, what I want to do with it is I want to dry it out completely before I seal it so that didn't really work did it I think I'm going to have to maybe almost stamp them on individually if I want to go around the corner so that's just adding something else to it which I felt was necessary so you know what I'm going to do now so when you see it the next time it will be sealed uh it will be um, sealed and varnished and probably maybe handles on it. I don't know. Maybe we'll just wait and I'll show you the handles that I'll decide for tomorrow. I'm not quite sure which handles I'm going to put on it yet. So that's all I'm doing. Highlighting some of these. Putting this round this edge and that's it. Okay, so we're finished. Martin put the handles on. It's got its natty new locks now. Um, which is great and they look nice and they're in keeping with the piece. I popped some nice ceramic ones up the top because it had the same sort of pink and went with everything else. So what was the tutorial about? It was basically saying, look, you can print things off at home. They don't have to be A3, they can be A4. If your printer isn't a laser printer and you're doing it with an inkjet, just remember and spray them first to seal them or they'll run everywhere. But it's a really good way of getting a custom look for a customer and being able to create something unique always remember that your images have to be free source you can't just use anybody's images unless you pay for them and that's fine um you can do that in different ways so uh what did we do we painted it we stuck on the some of the original artwork from um alice in wonderland some of it stuff i designed myself i painted it uh, and blended it in with the gray gray cream color did the blue did the stamping sealed it and pretty much that was it and remember i did the leg stripey as well so um this is going off believe it or not to my customer tomorrow um so i hope she's happy this will be her second alice in wonderland piece so um they obviously sell in her area and it was one that she specifically asked for so I've been Leo from Made by Marley. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's given you some food for thought in doing some custom work. Um, if you like it, um, push the thumbs up button. Martin's going like this behind the camera. <laughs> I was trying to do it right for once. If you want to see more from Made by Marley, push the bell notification. If you've watched this and you haven't already subscribed, I do furniture reimagining every week normally one video sometimes two i think there's two coming up shortly and can i just say before we go off thank you for all your lovely comments but can i also thank sydney who all the way from america at finger lakes um new york where is it Mark? new york new york street and she sent me a beautiful box of gifts really lovely gifts as if she could look into my mind and she knew me really well so i just like to say thanks to sydney Thank you so much for watching. I've been Lel uh, from Made by Marley and I'll see you again another day. Thank you.